Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii, Monday, October 16th. Do we have a guest for you, maybe one of the world's leading authorities on storage batteries. What's so big about storage batteries? Well, you are just about to learn about this. A little bit of background. Hawaii leads the nation possibly in the world in having PV or photovoltaic energy available to it. It has so much photovoltaic energy out there that in the middle of a sunny day, such as today, the PVs are producing more electricity than the utilities can absorb. The utility power plants, and you can correct me, Nick, mm -hmm. can only throttle back so much and if they throttle back some more it's just like a car engine that's idling too slow it it stalls mm -hmm. so they can only go back so much but the pv energy just keeps pouring on pouring on and a lot of that is just dumped into the ground huge waste what do we do about it we store that excess pv energy in not our little uh flashlight batteries, but in big batteries that are about as big as refrigerators. Uh, Tesla is probably the best known, but there's a whole slew of batteries out there. And the idea is that they absorb all this beautiful free energy during the day. And what happens to Hawaii's demand for electricity just as the sun sets and the PV energy goes away? Zoom! The demand for electricity goes up. Why? Everybody comes home from their schools and their work. All the household appliances goes on. The refrigerator door is opening, closing, opening, closing. The compressor is going like mad. Mom probably throws some wash into the laundry. Kids taking showers. Everything's going on at home. But there's more. Our economy is dominated by tourism. And what's going on with those beloved tourists? They're coming home from shopping, the beach, touring, whatever. They're pouring into their hotel rooms. All the hotel rooms are going great guns. And as soon as they've used up a whole lot of hotel room energy, what do they do? They go down to the restaurants and bars, hundreds of restaurants and bars, and that's going strong. Therefore, you have this peak of evening energy. Enter storage. All of that excess energy you stored during the day now can be applied towards that peak so that the utilities don't have to turn on what are called peaker plants, which are small generators that run, on, run relatively inefficiently. It's costing them more energy or more dollars to produce those kilowatt hours. So now with all of that nice stored energy, we shave that peak, make life much easier for the utilities. But there's more. Within that storage industry, there are dark clouds on the horizon in the form of inverters not progressing as rapidly as Moore's Law. Moore's Law seems to be dominating every energy industry under the sun, but not inverters. Hence, we turn to <laughs> our guest, Nick Dizon, CEO of Needon Computers, and I think a half dozen other companies, mm. and again, possibly the state's leading authority on storage batteries and inverters. So, Nick, get us up into the wonderful world of inverters here. Yeah, well, batteries are only <clears throat> as good as the inverter they're connected to. And what does an inverter do? The inverter takes the solar energy and puts it into the batteries. Mm -hmm. And then when the sun goes down, and I'm trying to make it as simple as possible, mm -hmm. the inverter converts that DC power, which is storable. D DC being direct current. Direct current power, mm -hmm. which is storable in a battery, mm -hmm. in, as chemical energy. And then taking that, discharging that out into the load, whatever the load is, the grid mm -hmm. or a home mm -hmm. or a business or a building or a microgrid. That's what an inverter does. Mm -hmm. It sounds simple, but it's actually a very complex activity. That inverter handles charging the storage as well as discharging storage. 
So it has to have programming and hardware and power conditioning to balance input output simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, it's poorly understood by primarily by customers and also by des uh, design engineers. Mm -hmm. As a result, the demand for inverters uh, is such that residential demand is up, but mm -hmm. commercial industrial demand and utility demand isn't high enough to sustain the industry uh, to continue in innovating and growing. So you, they're not putting all these dollars into research and development that they should be. In fact, there's fewer inverter mm -hmm. companies now, particularly uh, that are US based. Mm -hmm. um, you saw my comment on LinkedIn, an article came mm -hmm. out about how uh, inverter manufacturer in the United States is, you know, the numbers of them is declining. Um, I recently saw in LinkedIn the announcement of a primary salesperson from a company I won't mention that was on the leading edge of uh, intelligent inverters for commercial and industrial, and that person is no longer there. Um, mm. And that person had, had been at that company for a number of years and was well recognized uh, across the industry for selling that particular brand of inverter, which again was a leading edge one that, without saying their name, has been involved and approved for deployment in Hawaii. So this is a very troubling sign that mm -hmm. even as new battery technologies come out, most of those batteries are being aimed at residential. And mm -hmm. of course, Hawaii and California, particularly California with their new law saying new homes within the next couple of years all need to have renewable energy in it, mm -hmm. primarily mm -hmm. PV battery. Um, the market is gearing itself towards sales in California primarily and secondarily in, in Hawaii, too, but far mm -hmm. less in Hawaii. California is the driver. And now with California having mm -hmm. all these multi-day outages, mm -hmm. um, of course, all these PV battery inverter companies that are gearing up for residential, mm -hmm. they're beating the airwaves in California and on LinkedIn and all the other social networking for customers in California to start scooping up batteries and inverters mm -hmm. for their homes, mm -hmm. which a lot of that is cookie cut. A lot of that can be done. Mm -hmm. um, most companies do not design those properly either. So you'll probably pay a lot for an inefficient system, but at least when PG&E turns you off or whoever turns you off over there, you will have power for a period of time, mm -hmm. which for a lot of people going up to five days without power, that's gonna be worth it to them to do that. So, so isn't this a huge stimulus to the market then? Maybe it because is. we know more of these outages are coming, PG&E has no choice. Right, so the grocery yeah. stores, the drive-ins, mm -hmm gas stations, the mom and pop stores, the strip malls, they are all without an option. Mm -hmm. um, if they have 120, 240 split phase loads, no three phase motors, um, and they have the physical space, yeah, they could put PV and inverters and batteries from these uh, residential size systems. Mm -hmm. But if they have two way, three phase, four eighty three phase, they have reefers. They they've got motor loads that are three phase. Um, they're out of luck. Re reefers being large commercial refrigerators. Right, and mm -hmm. as as anyone who's gone through an extended outage knows, your number one appliance at home mm -hmm. is your refrigerator freezer. Mm -hmm. When Puna went down from the hurricane and I didn't have electricity for weeks on end, they were hunting high and low for ice. Truckloads of ice were being brought in for them so that they could have something to preserve food and have cold drinks and all of that good stuff because they had no power. Hmm. So that situation of the inverters not being available in the, for the commercial industrial, it's, it's really coming to a head. So I've been approached to design a lot of these systems and when it comes to 483 phase or 283 phase, I have a very small amount of choices that are approved for deployment mm -hmm. in Hawaii. And what kind of commercial industrial applications do we have in Hawaii? Well, one I of mean, the big... The resorts or something? Well, or? the resorts are, are, are a big one, but they're mm -hmm. not actively pursuing us to mm -hmm. do work. Right now, it's agriculture. Mm. 
So um, marijuana and CBD. So THC and CBD. This is a mm. um, where you know we're we're one of the we I believe we're the only guys that successfully did a USDA grant. Uh, off-grid battery project here. And so when a lot of these companies um, come to Hawaii and look for who has experience from the USDA's point of view, mm -hmm. um, the USDA website points a lot of them to us. So we get contacted a lot. And we're looking primarily again at one, two, one, uh, 12240 split phase as of now. The three phase stuff is coming. And with the 2045 100% renewable, um, that situation um, will have to be addressed. We're addressing the, the efficiency side. That's where that first slide comes in. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, the, we're bringing in this only approved solar assist device, mm -hmm. um, which we're now deploying statewide. We have really the best of breed contractors. Since I'm not a contractor, we have contractors that are um, all BIA, BBB, uh, mm -hmm. licensed, approved guys, bonded guys putting those in. So uh, he just showed a slide of a recent mm -hmm. installation over in uh, Hawaii Kai. Mm -hmm. And what that does, and you can see the photovoltaics in the back. So Okay, yeah, I see the photovoltaics. So, so we're doing houses. In fact, mm -hmm. through the end of this year, my contractors are booked solid putting in air conditioning with that solar assist device for the air conditioning and PV. We're effectively mm -hmm. building these houses off-grid, capable of off-grid right now. Wow, and, and that includes running the refrigerator at minimum. Yeah. The refrigerator and also the air conditioning. And mm -hmm. the only thing we're not mm -hmm. running on it is the dryer and the stove. Yeah. But everything else is on it, including water heating. We, yeah. we can do wow. that as well. Hmm. Be more efficient to have solar water heating, but... Uh, right, so... Yeah. Um, on, these, on a lot of these newer houses, if you mm -hmm. show you have an alternative way to make hot water that's not from fossil fuel, which is what we're doing, yeah, yeah. Then, mm -hmm. uh, then, then we're approved. Wow. Okay, well, we need to take a break, but we're just really, really getting rolling here. <laughs> Think Tech Hawaii, Code Green, Nick Dizon, CEO of Needon Computers and the Future of Inverters in Hawaii, back in a minute. Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stan the Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Wendy Lowe, and I want you to join me as we take our health back. On my show, all we do is talk about things in everyday life in Hawaii or abroad. I have guests on board that will just talk about different aspects of health in every, in every way, whether it's medical health, nutritional health, diabetic health, you name it, we'll talk about it. Even financial health, we'll even have some of the Miss Hawaii's on board and all the different topics that I feel will make your health and your lifestyle a lot better. So come join me. I welcome you to take your health back. Mahalo. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green Sync Tech Hawaii, Nick Dizon, CEO of Needon Computers and the inverter guy, I think, I'm prejudiced, but the inverter <laughs> guy for, the, for all of Hawaii, and he's pointing to a whole new way of approaching the combination of photovoltaics, storage batteries, we have, we know what photovoltaics are, but in that last slide, why don't we run that last slide again? And you t tell us just what, what's going on here now. All right, so that's hooked up to a, um, I believe that's hooked up to a Daikin air conditioner. So that Daikin air conditioner, if we were to put PV on there for it, that there is around 32 square feet of, of solar thermal panel. Mm -hmm. uh, we would need the equivalent of 238 square feet of PV to do the job of that one thermal panel. That, that's a ratio of... 10.25 to 1. Just about, yeah. Well, oh. yeah, it, maybe a little yeah. bit less, but it's still, okay. it's still 238 square feet versus 32 square feet. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. less than 10, but we're, we're really shrinking down the amount of roof space, which and, also means that the amount of PV battery that you would need to mm -hmm. run that house needs, 
doesn't need that 238 square feet of PV that would be tied mm -hmm. up by the air conditioner. What makes, and I, I, I shouldn't dispute you on numbers, but I'm pretty sure it's a ratio of 12 to 1. It could be, not. yeah, you, you could be right. Uh, what makes that little area so much more efficient than PV arrays? I mean, PV arrays are what, already 22% efficient, something like that? Yeah, but it's, uh, the PVs are doing an electric to thermal conversion, which you know there's a physics penalty Huge with loss. that, yeah. Yeah. versus yeah. thermal to thermal. That mm -hmm. solar panel is cut into the circuit in the superheat cycle between the compressor and the condenser. And mm -hmm. what that does is it causes a compressor in, in Hawaii's climate to back off by over 50%. So if that compressor normally is, has a running load amps of 25 amps, mm -hmm. it can drop below 15. It can drop down to 10. Mm -hmm. So if you're, mm -hmm. instead of running at 25 amps all day long, you're running at 10 to 15 mm -hmm. at most, you're saving significant power. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So this here is a commercial in, in, uh, installation. And we can see the industry in back there. We know where we are here. Yeah, yeah. well, that's yeah. actually Honolulu mm -hmm. Concrete and Dredge, HCND's mm -hmm. um, sand dial and office. They had a old York five-ton two-stage um, that ran at uh, 35, 35 to 40 amps. Mm -hmm. We replaced it with a carrier uh, two-stage five-ton, that dropped that down to around 28 amps. Then that panel that's on there dropped those amps on that brand. So there's, you can see behind him is the SunTrack panel, and to our left in the corner is a brand new Carrier 5-ton two-stage. That Carrier 5-ton mm -hmm. two-stage never runs at more than 10 amps. So that was a 70% improvement or reduction mm -hmm. in electricity to cool down the same space. And in this case, you're, you're on top of an office and it's cooling down the office in, in there, yeah. That's correct. So mm -hmm. we've knocked down the electrical costs to run those air conditioners by 70%. Because that's a commercial site, mm -hmm. they got accelerated depreciation. So they got the 30% federal, the 25%, mm -hmm. I mean the 35% state, and they got, you know, there's. There's a half a million dollar cap on that. They got nowhere near that. So they were able to fully utilize the 35. Mm -hmm. And then they had 17% on top of that first year for accelerated depreciation. Mm -hmm. That's a ridiculous amount of savings in year one. Definitely. And in that particular case, what if the office, the people need to stay well after sunset? The, the sun's gone away. The, when the sun goes away, those same sun track panels in that superheat cycle, mm -hmm. there is an inversion process that happens where they become 5 to 10 percent. Instead of being 50 percent plus efficient, they now drop to being 10 percent, 5 to 10 percent efficient over norm. Mm -hmm. That's because they act as an extension of the condenser, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're dumping that heat that's coming out of the room faster versus so at mm -hmm. night you, don't no, you no longer need that solar energy as the ambient temperature drops. At night, you want to be able to dump the heat, what, what heat you do have, quickly, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. now the SunTrack panel helps dump that heat. And what kind of heat are we talking about? It sounds like a rather, you don't, you don't want to take a bath in this stuff. Yeah, this is really hot. We're yeah, talking yeah. over 140 degrees, because mm -hmm. you're, the refrigerant goes into the room to absorb the heat from the room, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's not hot enough for it to be dumped quickly out into the air from the condenser. That's so the compressor provides heat and pressure for that efficient dumping of the heat. So during the day, we're using solar energy to do that on these panels. Mm -hmm. And at night, we're, we're having those panels help dump it. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, even a lot of mechanical engineers and refrigeration forget that. Or, or because if they haven't been doing refrigeration cycle stuff, they'll forget that that's what it is. How does more hot make cold? Mm -hmm. Well, you yeah. need that so delta up there to cause yeah. that heat to dump when it gets to the condenser. Yeah, to totally counterintuitive. So, That's right. Yeah, a lot of us have trouble with that. Yeah. So the end result mm -hmm. of all this for Hawaii as it relates to inverters means that we need less inverter, less battery, less photovoltaics to achieve the 100% renewable target of the state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Without this strategy and without 
uh, inverters that are, uh, have the programming ability in it, we won't achieve the state's goals. And the downside pressure to meet the state's goals is the fewer choices of inverters. So why don't, I'm sure you've been approached on this, why don't you just get some of these guys who are quitting and you've got a big company, just hire them, put them to work here. Well, there is a certain yeah. level of that going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know me well. Mm -hmm. You know when I see an opportunity, I'm, I'm not going to sit back. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually um, engaged into negotiation to actually manufacture an inverter with the, with the software that we're jointly developing with this other company mm -hmm. so that the load side and the charge side and the battery mm -hmm. side are all dynamically adaptive to load changes, mm -hmm. which does not exist today. These are complex algorithms, which is the core of AI, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. Mm -hmm. So we are building artificial intelligence. We've been doing that for a while on the software side so that our ability to support loads and to charge batteries and to balance that with the PV, with the load, we've been doing that for a while. Mm -hmm. Now we're working with a, a specialty inverter manufacturer to incorporate that with their inverter algorithms so it can dynamically adapt to the load, mm -hmm. charging source, ch charging batteries, and grid inter interconnection mm -hmm. simultaneously. There is nothing else on the planet that's even close. Why does this not surprise me? And I <laughs> presume this is going on in California, where, no, where the market is. No, no, no. no. It's, the mm. California market is overly focused on residential. You mentioned that, yeah. The yeah, intelligence yeah, yeah. to do um, this, these kind of elect power electronics mm -hmm. is in the Rust Belt. Hmm. Rust so, Belt's not so sunny, though. That's true. In January. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Which is why on my next think tech uh, <laughs> yeah. visit, I mm -hmm. will show you what we've done to bring the Rust Belt into renewable energy. Right now, they have half the year with solar DNI just drops through the floor. Mm -hmm. And so the, and then of course they don't have the state tax credit and the cost of electricity there is low. So they have a NEM in much of the Rust Belt. But their net energy metering credit is 2.9 cents a kilowatt hour. It's not very sexy. No, no it's not. Mm -hmm. So we had to come up with another way to incorporate PV into a holistic renewable energy system that includes batteries that mm -hmm. works mm -hmm. where you have four seasons. And we've done that. Our first pilot system is going on a line in the next 60 days. And the goal is to collect data on that through the winter. Mm -hmm. when that, and that, so when that data, we have that data, mm -hmm. it'll be mm -hmm. first and best in the world. Mm -hmm. So that means we here in Hawaii are setting up the basis for residential and commercial and industrial power systems for energy storage and inverters that's not gonna be, a, you know, we're mm -hmm. gonna be the source mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. I'm, well. And Hawaii leads the way to 100% clean electrical energy, so what a better state than to lead this charge? I think we've got a couple more slides, and our time is uh, running out here. Oh, yeah, what, what is this? Okay, so there's only two battery <clears throat> technologies that I deploy currently. I've deployed th four, but I've reduced it down to two. This is the, uh, the Lithium iron phosphate olivine battery from Sony Murata, currently carried by Blue Planet Energy. Carried that, by Blue Planet Energy? They are the distributor for that in really? the United States. Really? So they've States. expanded? I that's, mean, this is the Blue Planet? Yeah, that's, that, it's the for-profit side, Blue Planet oh, Energy. Okay, so, okay, okay. Yeah. So that battery is mm -hmm. unique in the lithium ion world. Any, mm -hmm. because all other, all other flavors of lithium ion battery, mm -hmm. regardless of chemistry, at, in excess of 30 degrees, centigrade or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, you degrade the lithium ion battery. And here it is, middle of October. I was just out in the sun. It's above 86 degrees right now in October. And as I yeah. told you before, the islands mm -hmm. are littered with dead energy store, lithium ion energy storage. They died in less than two years because ambient temperature is over 86 degrees. 
And so you, if you read the fine print on the warranties from all these guys, and I won't name them, mm -hmm. they'll say that they'll begin, they begin derating the battery and then there's a pro rata. And if that exposure to 86 degree plus temperatures is, wow. ex, is uh, extended, it chills the warranty. Can't you just put the batteries in number one in a shaded area and then if necessary, just blow or exhaust air out of there to get some airflow and keep it under 86, that would seem to be simple. Forced air is not enough because no. they have not designed the charge discharge profiles mm -hmm. at all. Um, most people just do a rough sizing and then they, they brute force it in, which mm. means that the amperage draw for charge and, and discharge is high driving up the temperature of the battery. And, and if the batteries are sighted close together, and there's, there's no, it, forced air is not enough now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. passive mm -hmm. ventilation convection is not enough. Now you need to actually introduce cooling, which is what Tesla has done on the Powerwall too. But doesn't that Create, reverse what you're trying to do here? Does that mean you have yeah. inefficient tear losses, yeah. vampire losses, mm -hmm. phantom losses? Yes. So every Tesla Powerwall 2, a lot of the other brands, mm. they all put cooling in there. Mm. And by doing that, you Reduce just... Reduce efficiency. Right. And now if there is no chance of a return on investment on those batteries. Wow. And we do have one more slide left here. What is this green guy here? Yeah. So years <laughs> ago, I was bringing in the Aquion Aqueous Hybrid Ion Slash Salt Water I Battery, the those, safest yeah. battery yeah. ever. Mm -hmm. They went bankrupt because their marketing strategy mm. was fail. Um, mm. So that green battery is literally called a green rock. It's the mm. descendant of the Aquion battery, now um, manufactured and distributed by an Austrian company called Blue Sky Energy. Mm. So I actually flew to SPI a couple of weeks ago. The SPI being? Uh, Solar Power International to meet the, the CEO slash director of Blue Sky because I've been buying, testing, and deploying their batteries. Mm -hmm. And their batteries have been very, very good. Now, what they are interested in, Blue Sky Energy and the Blue Ion people, is that I put those two batteries together on, on the same system. Mm -hmm. Because for motor inrush current, the lithium ion battery is a better solution for for up and down, quick, low amperage switching loads, mm -hmm. the green rock is better. If you have the green rock try to handle all of it by itself, it'll degrade quicker. If you have the lithium ion try to mm -hmm. handle it by itself, it'll degrade quicker. Mm -hmm. If you split that job up to their strengths, those mm -hmm. batteries will last two to three times and, longer. And you do have fluctuating current. We need to go, but I'll just point out there's some, something called clouds up there. Nice sunny, boom, cloud comes, amperage drops, cloud goes away. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And on that very cheery note, we must bid fond adieu again to Nick Dizon, CEO of Need On Computers. Thank you so much, Nick. We've just begun this conversation. In a few months, we're going to resume it with even better news. Yeah. Thank you very much, Howard Wig. Think Tech Hawaii. See you next time.